a lion, an ass, and a raven, tasked with maintaining a small electrical installation, sought to petition Jupiter for a resolution to their workplace unhappiness. Pray tell, spoke Jupiter, of what is the nature of your discomfort so observed. The ass stepped forward. O oh, wise Jupiter, father of the sky, whilst working on live electrical equipment, we have received injuries upon this very day through accidental touch contact with live parts. We observe sparks illuminate brightly like the stars, but painful burns have we received to our bodies. Tread Lord, we beseech thee to provide us with immunity to the pain and danger of electrical shock. Working live? inquired Jupiter. Hast thou not been furnished by my own hand with the good book? The very Electricity at Work Regulations 1989, in which Regulation 14 lays down no fewer than Conditions 3 when it comes to working live? namely that it be unreasonable in all the circumstances for the conductor to be dead, and it is reasonable in all the circumstances for the person to be at work on or near that conductor while it is live, and that suitable precautions, including, where necessary, the provision of personal protective equipment have been taken to prevent injury. So pray tell, have you complied with the wise word of law? Mighty Jupiter, you did indeed furnish us with the good book, replied the ass. However, we have had not the time to part the pages and digest the sage advice of this fine tome. Instead, we ask that you grant us the strength to resist electrical injury so as we can continue our labours whilst power remains present. Jupiter was so outraged by such indolence that in his fury he struck down the ass with a fearsome bolt of lightning. He roared at the startled lion and raven, Foolish creatures! Thou would seek to ignore the learned wisdom offered by thine health and safety executive? Unwise is the creature who thumbs his nose at safe isolation procedure, and who fails to ensure electrical wiring is not enlivened before undertaking work. Thou shalt receive from me protection none from electric shock, not even so much as BDE gloves. Upon hearing Jupiter's words and fearing the same fate as the ass, the lion nervously fumbled a standard multimeter and a non-contact voltage indicator from within his toolbox. O oh, great and powerful Jupiter, perhaps instruments such as these can be so employed in proving wiring to be devoid of all energy before commencement of maintenance or upgrade activities. No, thundered Jupiter. Thou shalt use only a dedicated voltage contact test instrument for such a purpose, such as the Chauvin Arnu CA762. Stalwarts like the Martindale VI 13800 or Trabund MTL 10, or if on a budget, perhaps the TIS 851. The lights emitted by these and other similar yet no less worthy magic candles will betray the presence of a live conductor with no fear of a dial being set erroneously or of batteries exhausted therein. Indeed, O oh great Jupiter, said the lion, but how does one prove the efficacy and operation of such doubtless fine instruments? Though I entrust unto the proving units three. Behold, Martindale's PD240, Mega's MPU690, Qtex QProof 3. These and other worthy marks shall be used both before and after employment of any voltage tester to verify its operation. Alternatively, in the absence of such proving devices, a known good source can attest to the learned reporting and continuing good servitude of thine indicator instrument. The lion gratefully received the proven unit equipment and put it all in his toolbox alongside his voltage tester before turning for a final time toward Jupiter. O magnificent Jupiter, my eyes are now open to the importance of safe isolation and the instruments necessary in ensuring it is always correctly performed to avoid the terrible risk of injury or death. But please, Pray tell, what is the raven to offer our tale, for she has contributed naught towards our endeavours upon this day. At which point, the raven flew majestically up into the air, and shut down the lion's nose. Mm.